window cleaning business, but it's 50% of that process. And then the same when we come to rinse. If, you, if we can get rinse down from 15 movements to three movements, right? This is what we're talking about. And then, so that, that's where you go, do you really want to sit down and fiddle and fart ass around and use whatever expletive you want and hate this thing? Hell yeah. Because if it took you 40 hours in the next two years to understand exactly what tool, what time, what place, what job, then for the next 10 years you get the benefit of 50% savings, you know, 1,000% savings in time and effort. Yeah? So, so the, the downside is that we, it's a six month old product, it's only been around for a six months constructor brush, and we don't know all the answers and we need to wait for the answers to collate from guys like you giving us feedback. We can then collate it and then feed it back and make it easier for the next guy, right? Oh, I've got, I, I'm in this area, I do this kind of work and I use a brush made like this and I can get to two strokes, um, agitation and automatic rinse. Yeah, that's what we're trying to get to. So before we do that, let's cover off traditional just in case any of you stay there or, um, or have been there or guys of you want to learn why, what the juxtaposition is. This time I'll take you up on your own. <laughs> so the traditional brush is a set of bristles that potted, there's gaps between them and then the intention is that we're going to um, scrub the glass in order to disturb the dirt into solution. Similarly to what we talked about traditional, if you've got a 10 inch brush, then how many strokes? Five. Five, whatever, yeah. Usually because the water's coming out from two or four jets um, from the brush, we tend to have a wet up cycle first. So we kind of quickly go over the glass, not really thinking a whole lot, but we just kind of wet the glass. Is that fair? Yes. Yeah. And then we start to do our agitation and we're aiming to do two agitations. But not all jobs are the same, so it's understandable that from time to time we would lose confidence that we can just do two agitations. So and that's the that's the weakness of a broom brush, which is always the same. Yeah. Then we're on a pole and we want to do a rinse. Now if I put only a few bristles on a brush and make them further apart, can I leave that brush on the glass? Like an under inlay, radial, right? Long bristles are probably half the number of bristles of any other brush on the market. Yeah, so you can basically leave that brush on the glass because the, the, the intention of their design is that if there are not many bristles and they're a long way apart, then whatever water is in there maybe can clean that brush. Right, but what's the weakness of not having so many bristles? Lose you have to do more strokes for agitation, yeah, and you've got no <coughs> sense of confidence that every piece of glass has been touched that you've disturbed all of. So then you get a kind of, you know, you rob Peter to pay Paul. And the, the reason we, most of us, some kind of flitting between two different schools of thought, the intention ultimately is to leave the brush on the glass, not to have to come back and counter counterbalance it, and you know, and then fiddle and whittle and you know, rinse it off, but I'll show you what the traditional way is. We would then take the brush off the glass and use the jets of water and run along the top and then we would rinse with a horizontal pattern, yeah, mm -hmm. and chase the dirty water off the glass. That's the process. The problem is we have two kinds of glass in the market. One is called hydrophobic and one is called hydrophilic. Who doesn't know what I just said? Right. So phobic is fear, right? Fear is repel, yeah? So if you get hydrophobic glass, it will repel the water. It will bead, like almost immediately. As soon as the jet of water hits the glass, it'll start calling, causing little rivulets and bead, and the water will bead, right? And hydrophilic glass, philic is love, actually, right? It's a really weird word, you know? Philanthropist. But, huh? Philanthropist. Yeah. Philanthropist, there you go, thank you. <laughs> from my wordsmith. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have the fillet, it kind of allows the water to laminate on it, right? So it's sheets. So you've got beads and sheets. Mm. That's the kind of you know, simple method you know, of, of remembering. So if the water sheets, and then the water, you, you have that, 
then the water will run down a long way before it starts separating. <laughs> There's one more if you guys end up doing that. So, so basically, when the water, and we'll show you when we hit these, this other glass, you know, around the corner as to whether it's hydrophobic or hydrophilic, but you'll know, yeah. right? It hits the glass. Now, these are pencil, these are called pencil jets. There are two kinds of jets: pencil jets, fan jets. Um, just those of you who want to think about fan jets, usually we think about them like that, but that's the proper way to think about a fan jet: is putting a spray pattern vertically. And I'll explain why in a minute. Yeah. Um, but as soon as that water hits the glass. What we should be observing is a little, and I'll draw it in, on the whiteboard later so you've got a copy of it to take a photo, a little upside down eyelet, uh, eye drop. Can you relate to that? Yeah. Okay. So it hits the glass and then the pressure pushes up and it's going too fast it'll splash. We don't want splash, right? Mm -hmm. Splash means dirty water goes above rinse line. So, so if we get a little, a little um, uh, upside down eye drop, then that means that it's hydrophobic, yeah? Because straight after that, it starts rivering, yeah? And if I get a big one, that means that it's hydrophilic. So it's allowing the water to stay on the glass longer, so that when I go across and, across and do the rinse, you can actually see the depth of the rinse from the pencil jets. Can you relate to that? So if you're gonna train water fed, traditionally, you have to know that because the first thing the guy needs to see is what is what we call the rinse depth. And the rinse depth determines the structure of your rinse phase, yeah? Because the rinse phase says, I have to... Great. Okay, so... Can you see that? No, you might want to use black. black. That's the first time we'll see it. See that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> if it's hydrophobic, you'll only see a very small rinse depth. If it's hydrophilic, you'll see a much bigger rinse depth. That's probably not there. It's Does there. the industry make these two types of glass? Yes. Sure. Okay. Yes. In fact, you get some glass which is both hydrophilic and hydrophobic. And there's on the same piece of glass. A window wax that makes it um, hydrophobic. Yes. Yeah, you can even turn hydrophilic glass into hydrophobic glass. <laughs> it's a nightmare, I'll show you why. It's not anymore, by the way. All the problems I'm gonna tell you about, don't worry, I've got them all sorted. <laughs> but this is the truth. If this was the size of your squeegee blade, then you could see that this guy has to rinse that pattern there. Can you see that? That this water rinsed to there, so the next pass has to pick up where it failed, yeah, and then come down, and then come down, and then come down. Now that's not a bad rinse depth, right? So those of us who use water fed a lot, that would be pretty typical horizontal lines of rinsing. But if the water hits and you get that, and then you do this, what happens? You're leaving right. sediment in that. You're not even right. not even touching that. Like it's going to river and you'll get some of it. Yeah. But then when people say that water fed doesn't work, this is the reason water fed doesn't work. Because they don't understand rinse depth, you know, based on the shape of the water when it reacts and then touches the glass from a pencil jet. Why does a fan jet have a potential to work better? Yeah. Yeah. If it's turned vertically, it creates a rinse depth. Yeah? If it's horizontal, it does nothing. Quite nice. Okay? The problem with fan jets, why are they a problem, is because as a rule they create more pressure, they don't have laminar flow. So they splash. Right? So if you get it right, you got it right, but it, but it's risky and it's hard to train. So that's why you'll see the industry stays with pencil jets as a rule. Yeah? It's not that a professional can't use fan jets, but it's just hard to train fan jets. So the fact is, if I have hydrophobic glass, which on an 80-20 rule, what do you reckon? It's 20%. 20%? Has the phobic? Yeah. Okay. What, anybody else? I mean, it doesn't have to be 80 or 20, but it's, it's, not, it's not five, is it? <laughs> and it can be a lot more. 
and you get a business park and the whole business park could be home over. So what has to happen now is that my rinse pattern has to be Do I really have to go to the bottom of the glass? No. Okay. <laughs> Do you get it? That is the only way to rinse a hydrophobic glass with a rinse step like that and know that you've chased all the dirty water off the glass. Make sense? Yes. There's no other way. So just let me cover a couple of the problems, right? When you see somebody, if we're talking traditional, because all of these problems are solved, but we just talk, you see occasional spots on the glass, what caused it? They're not regular, completely irregular, we think. <coughs> and proper rinse? Yeah, so you will see a guy um, rinsing like that, mm -hmm. not using horizontal lines, using zigzags. So he gets some parts he cleans and the rinse steps covered it, and other parts he doesn't know rinse depth, so he's left some gaps. You see spots along the bottom. What caused it? Splash 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 splash. Two causes. One is a splash, splash off the sill. Right? Didn't rinse right? the bottom. Hmm? Didn't rinse the bottom. When he didn't rinse the bottom, there's two reasons he didn't rinse the bottom. Either there's a sill there and he can't see it, so his brain has turned off the bot where the bottom is. Like when you're wearing a cap, uh, you probably most of you doesn't don't get this, but I kind of walk into things. But, but so what happens is that when you're wearing a cap, your brain actually thinks that that's how tall you are. That's weird, huh? Mm -hmm. You can practice it if you want, but it's true. <laughs> I got told when I was in the Navy, I grew to this height when I was in the Navy, and they just told me you're not allowed to wear your because I was an officer under training, so we had a peak on our cap. Um, okay, so there's one, it splashes off the bottom. There's two, they didn't rinse all the way to the bottom. And three is what is the most common one, is that they have hydrophilic glass, right? So they are kind of run one rinse there, one rinse there, one rinse there, and let it run. Yeah, it's kind of like a cockiness about it. Can I use that word? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So there's like a little mini arrogance that the water is just laminating and running and it's perfect and all that. But it's a little bit like the hood of your car. Yeah, that the rain disturbed the dirt, but the dirt didn't roll off because there wasn't enough momentum to pull the water. You know, even though all that rain left the bonnet of the car or the hood of the car, right? All the rain left and a few beads and they dried and rearranged the dirt, but the dirt didn't leave because the dirt sticks to the surface, like the gold panning principle, yeah? The heavy one goes to the bottom. So even with laminar flow, if you don't keep chasing, if you don't keep accelerating that water, it won't, the, the dirt will just roll down the glass and eventually, you know, it'll, it'll still be on the glass at the bottom. So you can see some lazy things. What happens if you have stripes in the corners? With what? No, the brush didn't clean it. Agitated. It wasn't enough agitation. Correct, because you can only see the stripe. You can't see stripes in glass, so that means you can only see stripes in dirt, which means that the bristles didn't agitate. Okay, S stripes are agitation, spots are rinse. Easy. Mm. Yeah. Um, what if you see spots down the side? Splash half the sill. Yeah. Nope. Nice try. Yeah, uh, it's two. Correct. So again, the brain, we have, um, we put our jets you know, as close to the edge as we could, but the standard waterfed brush will have the last jet is there. So the guy's standing way down here, right? And in his mind, he's taken the brush to there, right? Because he's at an angle. So in his mind, he's to there, but this jet is only rinsing to there, ah. right? So with waterfed, we always rinse over the edge of the the edge because we can put pure water on a clean piece of glass because it'll still dry spot free. In fact, it's probably still wet anyway. Yeah? And we can go across and we can wet this one up because we haven't got there yet. Do you know what I mean? Assuming we're moving in this direction. Yeah? So one is that we didn't mix edge to edge. And the second one is? No, because that would be consistent. Oh, well, I was thinking pulling dirt from under the seal. seal, seal. That's possible. Yes, not the, not the most likely, but definitely possible. There's another one is the silicon leach. 
right? That, oh, that, yeah. See, all the all the big big American lunches are starting to take effect. <laughs> <laughs> all the boys are getting sleepy. Yeah. <laughs> right. So um. So basically, what is it? Like a, it's a it's a leaching of this whatever's in there oh, leaches yeah. across the glass. Yeah. So the only way way to deal with that if you have hydrophobic edges and hydrophilic middle is exactly the same as you would with a squeegee is you have to think about the edges get the water off the edges yeah and then rinse the glass so in other words you would chase chase the the water once you see it you deal with the edges separately and then you do your rinse pattern right because it's incredibly hydrophobic when it's like that so it's really really likely to spot yeah because the water the water almost some places I've got a video which we've got on a, somewhere on our line online which shows the water hit and and river like it doesn't there's not even a shape it's like crazy crazy so that's often what when that silicon is sitting in there okay what other problems can we have don't you have a streak coming down old streaks we haven't talked about streaks we've talked about stripes we've <coughs> talked about spots but we haven't talked about that horror <laughs> Okay. Uh, <laughs> wet and then it, it dribbles down. Correct. So what's what's actually causing that, and why is it there? The water gets behind the seal, and then it runs down there. So right. It's a failed seal. Yeah. So the seal, instead of being flat and flush on the glass, it's got a kink in it, and then there's a hole. So remember, we talked about the shape of a of a water bubble, and we're saying the surface tension is what's holding the water bubble together. Then when you're up here, if you look at it side on. The, the glass is here and the seal is like that. Yeah, so there's some sort of gap in the seal. It should be going to the glass and sealing on the glass, but in this little place here, it's not. And so in here, there's a, a water bubble, right, of water. In there is horrifically dirty, right? And then this, the surface tension of that water is able to hold it, reverse suspended, you know, hanging onto itself and then it dries like this and at some point the surface tension is no longer sufficient to hold the water but that point may be after you've left the job <laughs> so this glass is all dry this fella here he's gone he's gone to nothing and you you're a happy customer and then down it drops yeah and usually that's a big a big one but water can do that water's strong you know it can hold a lot of a lot of its own weight, and then down it drops. You're a professional window cleaner, you should spot that seal. You should spot it. You should train your guys to, as soon as you see one, you take your guys over and you say, you see that, that's where it's gonna streak. That's the only, the first and most important answer is look for it. Just like we say, look for the rinse steps if you're gonna use pencil jets, yeah? There are things to have your attention on that will ultimately save you time. Once you know it's going to streak, you've got options, right? So one option is? Dry the edge. Dry the edge, yes. Can you rinse the heck out of that kink area? It's hard. It's a nice thought, but it doesn't work. Yeah. yeah. You kind of think you could get the bristles up under there and yeah. clean it all out so it's only Dong pure water up in there. No, that doesn't happen. Huh? Don't go as high. Correct. Like one is that we, we can go to two steps, or do you? Go to two, or do you do it with one? You just leave it. If, it. if there's no window above it, then I will brush. He just won't even go. Water there. off of the top sill. Yeah. So he just leaves that. It's just kind of sacrilegious, but it works because in his experience, customers don't look up there and to check it. You know, if it was horrifically dirty, of course you would because that's the thing. Then you'll go right, to. But a, you're not even leaving a line on it. <sighs> right. Because your bristles are still hitting it, but you're just careful not to get water off. You just don't want water in there. And then the other one is that you you basically you're on two stage, you 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 wash the frame and that area, you know, down to about there, and then you work your way around and then you come back and you do the rest of the window and you don't you don't go near there. I mean, whatever it is, you gotta keep that dry. The third one is if it's completely everywhere is use a squeegee, you know, for example. You know, so you've got to think through. But the the point from a water fed perspective is to notice it. What do we do when it does streak? If we didn't notice it, you do the same as me. 
and touch it up. Touch it up, wrap a microfiber around your tip of your pole and just go and clean it up. There's no big problem. So if you know that it's a hot summer's day and all of those streaks are going to drop before you leave the site, that's another way to do it. It's just operate as normal and then say we're going to, it's the 80 20 rule, we know we've got a problem coming, right? We go back and clean up the problem. Yeah, that's more of an issue in commercial glass with the seal because yes. they have the yes. rubber seal. In residential glass, that's less of an issue uh, because of the way they're manufactured here. However, uh, scrubbing, if you scrub the top frame of the window, Right, sometimes you'll find that it will then want to drip down and it continues to produce spots. So if you're putting a screen back in front of the top window, right, if you take the screen off and you put it back, you realize that top frame sits behind the screen. Who can ever see the top frame behind the screen? The person sitting on the inside looks out through the window this way. The person looking from the ground sees the screen, but they don't really ever see that top frame because it's hidden behind the frame of the screen. I'll stay off of that frame if I can at all, right? Because then I'm not running the risk of it dripping, and I, why would I clean something people can't even see to have an issue with anyway? Right? right? Yeah. So those are the tips. Yeah. On traditional water fed. Now, if we recognize all of those problems, you're the you're the holder of the traditional water fed solution. Um. Oh, I'll just borrow it back for a second. So if you have a look at bristle gap and then you have a look at bristle blades, can you notice a difference? Yes. Right? So if we have a blade of bristles, what it says is that there's no way that A, water can get past it, B, that, it, that there's any part of the glass that hasn't been touched by a bristle, and the, it's the tips of the bristles which do the cleaning, yeah? not the sides of, of a synthetic bristle, right? So anything nylon, PP, PET, it's the side of the bristle. The bristle is an extruded piece of plastic. It's pushed through a machine with a very fine hole under pressure. The side of the bristle is perfect. It's not going to agitate. So when you see a long bristle brush like the younger Inlight and then you press it against the glass so there's overspraying, then the tips are coming off the glass and then you're just rubbing the, what you probably call the shaft of the bristle against the glass. That's not the fastest way to use a brush, right? It's like sweeping with a broom and sort of trying to sweep with the side yeah. of the broom bristles, right? If you really want to be efficient with a broom, you flick it with the tips of the, of the broom, right? It's, it's really true, but mildly uncomfortable. <laughs> we really, we really want that under in light to be. <laughs> we really want that under in light, and that was my recommended brush, by the way. I can talk about it with great affection. I always said, if you're cleaning at heights, we only had a 10-inch brush ourselves. If you're cleaning at heights, the younger in light radial is the best brush on the market up until you know we we got this little fella out. Come to the same conclusion. Yeah. So, but the problem was that it had no ability to hold its shape once you once it had pressure on it. Right, it's got no rigidity on the inside. It's got inner bristles, but they're, not, they're made of the same uh, density and composition as the outer bristles. Do you know what I'm talking about? The green one, the green brush? Yeah. I know. Yeah. So then when you go to collapse it under pressure or it whatever, work. it just goes <laughs> exactly like splat, you know? But So it's, it doesn't have the ability to what hold thought, the shape. What I thought the, the advantage of it would be the, the radius. It, it has an advantage on the radius because it's stable it under the kind of At some point, actually, at the edges, maybe not in the middle here, it just kind of hits it. The objective is to make the fastest tool. Not does it clean or doesn't it clean. Hey, you can take a broom and clean windows, right? It's not special. Right. <laughs> it's just bristle tips on glass, rinse. Right. Yeah? And there's a video of me on my channel of me cleaning my mum's windows because I went back to New Zealand. And she says, oh, you're here. Can you clean my windows? And I go, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> so I got a broom and a tap and got my mum to video me cleaning her windows spot free with a <coughs> just a little, a little broom <laughs> and a tap. That's sacrilegious, right? <laughs> Manufacturer. I haven't seen those. <laughs> I'll pass these to you because if they fall off my head, somebody's like that. I'll do a bar of a few each time. 
<laughs> yeah. Try our permutate meeting. Okay, so, so a couple of the things that we want to do. Firstly, we want to make sure that we have 100% coverage of bristles on glass. Yeah? And um, then we want to apply uh, two steps. One is that we compress the brush. There's no way that it compress such that the bristles bend back up on themselves, the conversation we just had. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So that all the bristles, even at the maximum, Compaction. Now, how do we do that if you feel those inner bristles? Oh, yeah. That's super hard, yeah? yeah. So, you feel those? Unless you're already a. <laughs> right? this, is the, this is what we call the original layout. So, if you, comp if you compact this brush, it will clean bird poo, bat poo, seagull dung, do, whatever the word is. I'm so scared of being politically correct in this country. <laughs> we, would just, we would just call it what it is, right? <laughs> Where do we come from? Artillery fungus. Oh, and artillery fungus. How many of you have that up here? The little... Okay, you have it. The fancy okay, I, Like, it's no, 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 a fungus. It's a it's a fun. But you may have to adjust the, the configuration of the brush, right? So what's... Let me just show you what's happening in the brush. That's what the brush is. So we can change, we've got boars here, we've got PP, we've got straight bristles, we've got crinkle bristles, we've got thin bristles, heavy bristles. We can make it whatever it needs to be. Are you going to change it from Mrs. Jones's house to Mrs. Smith's house across town? No way. Could you have a set of brushes set up for certain tasks knowing that this is the fastest brush on this task and then all tasks like that have this brush? Yes. So that's why it's constructor. It's not constructed to be changed, it's constructed to construct. Is yep. ores here good for dusty climates? Ores here is good in all climates as an, as, a, as an agitator. Just full stop, it's good. The difficulty with ores here is it's heavier and it holds the water, so, and it has more friction against the glass, so it's, it takes right. more effort from a worker. And it's just, uh, challenging to get into corners real well. Yeah, so. yeah. So there's, there's well, I some understand is, uh, the side of the bristle is not the bristle tip. You can use the bristle tip, of course, because it's a tip, but also you can use the side of the bristle. Yeah. So if you look at the way we do it, maybe George, are you here? George, Just coming out. George, could you look and see if there's a bristle, a blade of boar's hair in there somewhere? It doesn't matter if it's not. So here's the thing. If we have, and can you bring that 12 inch? I don't have a 12 inch here. Okay, so let's say this is a different configuration of brush, but if you're thinking agitation strokes, right? Oh, the first step of agitation was to wet up the glass. What if it's already wet? So what if with a rinse bar we can say the first stroke is already wet? Then out of our three strokes, two agitation strokes, so one wet up and two agitations, what if we can immediately change the way we think and remove the wet up. Because you can. On, on the first stroke up, the glass is wet. Yeah? Now, you have a look and say, okay, if I use a 12 inch brush, one, two, three, four, and maybe we'll double up there. Yeah? Or we go one, two, three. How much did we just change our number of strokes for agitation? Yeah, so two out of five, 40%, or two from three, 60%, you know, whichever way you want to look at it. But the savings are real, yeah? It's 40% saving in, in number of strokes. That's boar's hair, like animal hair, yeah? So here's the next thought for you. 